Here are seven quick tips you can use when transforming objects. Before we start, let's make sure the transform panel is available in your setup. You can enable it from the window menu and then selecting the transform option. I always like to have the transform panel available in my setup. It does not only allow me to transform an object, but also gives immediate information about the position and size when an object is selected. The first tip is using expressions in the transform panel. Suppose I want to make the object two times smaller. A quick way of doing this is by entering 50% and pressing enter. Affinity will now calculate 50% of the current value, which results in half of the existing value. Here is another interesting way to change the value. Suppose I want to make it two times bigger this time. I could have written 200%, but you can also type multiply equals 2, which translates to multiply the current value by 2. The equal sign is optional. So I can also just write divide by 2 to make it two times smaller again. You can also use values from other fields. If I want to assign the width value to the height, I can just type in W. After pressing enter, the height will become the current width value. Or I can say make the width equal to the X value by typing X in the width field and then press enter to apply it. Another interesting value, which is not very common and much people know it, is the L value, which stands for length. Length is only applicable for lines, so let me quickly draw a line with the pen tool. Notice now, when I select the line, the S field is replaced by the L, which is the length of the selected line. I can now select our main object again and type in L. The last known length will be applied, which was the length of the line I drew a few seconds ago. Let's check that, but let me first make the line visible by adding a stroke to it. When I now position the line above our object, you can see the width of the object is the same as the length of the line. Pretty awesome! You can also just use existing values. For example, I can add 20 pixels to the current width by just adding plus 20 at the end of the current value. On to the second tip. Just like with most labels in the UI, you can hold and drag on the label to change the values. If I hold and drag on the W, I'm now changing the width by moving to the left or the right. A power tip here is to move diagonally with your mouse, which will allow smaller increments as your mouse is not traveling as much in the horizontal direction. As you have noticed, the width and the height are linked and the image is scaled with aspect ratio. Suppose you scaled without aspect ratio. How can you fix the aspect ratio again very quickly? Pretty easy. While the object is selected, double-click on a control point and the image will be resized in the direction of the node so it will be in aspect ratio again. Pretty cool! The next step is a quick way to enable the transform origin, which you probably enable from the toolbar most of the time. However, if you disable the anchor point in the transform panel, which is at the center right right now, the transform origin will be enabled automatically. By the way, the white dot on the left is just a reference indicator saying where the top left of the object is, which sometimes can be useful when an object is rotated. If you're not familiar with the transform origin point, here's a quick explanation. It allows you to change the origin position from where the transformation will apply. A pro tip you can double-click on the original point to reset it back to the center. When you want to flip an object, you could try to do it manually by dragging a control point to the other side. But it is much easier to use the flip command. A quick way to access that is by right-clicking on the object and select one of the flip options from the transform menu. You can also use the arrange menu from the main menu, but mostly right-clicking is faster. The final tip for today is about the text frame resizing. Let me quickly add a text frame to our image. 
normally when you resize a text frame, the frame will be resized and the text in the frame will keep its original font properties, which is what you want probably most of the time. However, when you want to resize the text with the same ratio as the frame, you can use the second control point on the bottom left. When I resize the frame right now, the text will be resized with it. When you group a text frame with other layers, the secondary control will also be available when the group is selected, which is pretty cool. So you can choose how you want to resize the group. Keep in mind though that entering values in the transform panel will only resize the frame of the text. So only way to resize the text within the frame is using the secondary control point. I hope you found these tips useful and thank you again for watching. Until the next video.